Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video four in our animation series. Now, in the last three videos, we talked about animating this robot. We used a 3D sketch and we used a pathmate. Now, that allowed us to create the path we wanted out of a spline and control the motion of our robot that way. What we want to do now is take a look at a more advanced technique using a motion study and event based motion. Now when you're dealing with a component such as this robot, you would have multiple motors and servos to control its motion. So the event based motion study within our animation is going to be a little bit more accurate and a better way to control the motion. So one thing I want to point out before we get started is if we expand our mates, you'll notice that I've pretty much suppressed all the mates that I had that were controlling the motion when we did our motion based with our path mate. So now that we're going to be doing event motion, really all that I've kept is a rotation lock between these two components and some parallel mates. And the only reason I kept these parallel mates is to limit the amount of control I needed, just to kind of speed things up and simplify it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a motor to rotate our base, a motor that rotates this link in relation to the base, and a motor that rotates this link in relation to the mid. So the parallel relations between this body and this body in the top plane will help keep everything in line. And then I'm going to do one last motor that's more of a linear actuator to control the jaws. So we're going to right click on motion study and create a new motion study. Now when you go to the animation drop down into motion analysis, you'll notice that a new little icon pops up on the right hand side called event based motion view. You can also right click on your robot assembly or whatever the name of your assembly is and go to your event based motion view. The important thing here is that we're creating tasks, triggers and actions as opposed to manually controlling the motion. So because we're doing event based, we're going to be creating our motors and our servos that we can control within this event based task manager. Before I create any motors, I need to create some contacts. I'm going to create solid body contacts between the four jaws of our robot in this component. That way when we go to pick it up, we'll actually have some solid body contact there. And then I need to create a solid body contact between the component we're picking up and the location we want to drop it. That just makes sure that everything interacts the way it should. So now we can get started by creating some motors. So I'm going to create a rotary motor on the base that will rotate in relation to this part. Under our motion section, we want to go down to servo motor and we're going to base it on displacement. Now it's a good idea to rename these. So I'm just going to call them bottom, middle, and top just to simplify the descriptions here. So next we want to create a new motor. It's going to rotate this component in relation to our base. And again, we're going to use a servo type based on displacement. And I'm going to call this one mid. And it's a good idea to, to rename these because when you're creating these tasks, you're going to be picking them based on their names. And then the third one is going to be based off of this face. And pay close attention to the directions they're rotating because when you enter values to change them, it's going to determine whether you're entering a positive or a negative value. And again, by displacement, and we'll just call this one top. And the last one that we want to create, we're going to change the transparency of this component. And there's actually a rod in the center that connects to all four jaws and that controls the jaws opening and closing. So again, I'm going to create a motor. This time it's going to be a linear actuator. And we're going to reverse its direction and we're going to base it off of the section that's holding the jaws. Again, it's going to be a servo based on displacement. So you should be seeing a common theme here. I've created all servo motors based on displacement, and then I added a few contacts between the solid bodies here. So now that we've created all this, we can get started creating some events. Now one thing that I want to note is the timeline here. It only goes to five seconds. So I want to make sure that I give myself a little bit more time. I'm going to go all the way up, and I'm going to manually drag this out to say 12 seconds. And the reason I do that is because that five seconds can come up pretty quickly and you can create tasks that go past that five second mark and they simply won't rebuild. So let's get started adding a few tasks and take a look at what kind of motion we can create. So once you add a new task, it's automatically named task one. You can rename the task or you can add a description if you wish. The trigger, in this case we're going to trigger it by time and we're going to set zero second time delay. 
Now, once we start creating tasks, you can actually trigger them by tasks or sensors that you've created, whether they be sensors to help control contacts between components or forces or whatever you're using your sensors for. The feature, in this case, we're gonna select our motor and our motor for the bottom or the base of our component. The action is gonna be a change and the value is gonna be 60 degrees. Now we can pick a duration for this. Now in our case, I'm gonna pick one second. I'm gonna go ahead and calculate this and we're gonna be able to watch the motor rotate. Now, this is a common problem and a lot of people get into this and it can instantly cause you problems and you sit here trying to track down why things aren't working or uh, you know what the problem is. For whatever reason, if you start with no time delay, a lot of times it's not gonna rebuild, not gonna calculate properly. I'm just gonna give it a one second time delay. I'm gonna recalculate this. And you notice now that after that one second delay that we get the motion that we need. So for whatever reason, that time delay is causing a problem, not having it in there. If you start at zero, for whatever reason, it's gonna cause a problem. So now we're at a one second time delay and we've got one second to rotate this component. Let's go ahead and add a few more components. So task two is gonna start based on task one. So task one, the condition, we can either start at the beginning or the end. So we're gonna start at the end of task one, no time delay. And the feature we wanna use in this case is gonna be not the bottom, but the mid link. So you'll notice that if I select more than one component, they all stay highlighted. You can control more than one at once. I'm gonna select my mid value. I am gonna use the change option. And the value I need to change it in this case, we're actually measuring 113.61 degrees between links, but we need to subtract out that 90 degrees. So it's gonna be 23.61 degrees, and we're gonna have that take one second. Now, before I recalculate this, I'm gonna go ahead and add another task. I'm gonna say task two is gonna be my trigger, but I'm gonna start at the beginning of task two. My feature that I'm gonna use is gonna be the top link, and I'm gonna change its value and we're gonna change it 70.66 degrees, and again, over one second. Now you do have a couple options for profile. You can do constant acceleration. You can do some other options here. For us, we're just dealing with linear. All right, so now this should allow us to rotate 60 degrees, and that should bring the jaws all the way down to our part. The next thing we wanna do is close our jaws. So we don't wanna start this at the beginning of the task where we were lowering it. We want it to start after those. So we're starting at the end of task three. We are going to use the linear motor feature that we created. We're gonna change its value. And in this case, I believe it's gonna be a negative 0.15 inches to close that. We're gonna have that take half a second. The next thing we need to do is raise it back up. So starting at the end of our last task, task four, we want to change both our mid and our top. So let's start with the top. We're gonna to change its value. And in this case, we're gonna go negative 70.66 degrees, and we're gonna have that take one second. Task six is gonna start at the same time as task five. So we're starting at the beginning, and in this case, it's gonna be our mid link. We're gonna change its value and it's gonna be minus 23.61, and it's gonna take one second. So this should now rotate us around, drop down, pick up this component, and bring us back to this point. So let's just calculate to make sure everything's working properly. So it's gonna rotate around in one second. Both arms will drop down. The jaws will close. Remember, we have a solid body contact between the components. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to figure out this step, even though it's only very short. And you can see as it picks it up, everything's moving because of that solid body contact. There's no gravity applied. There's no mass properties with any of these components. So you can see it just kind of moves around freely. So everything is working properly right now. We've rotated around, we've picked the component up. So next we wanna add another task and this task is gonna start at the end of task six. And in reality, we could actually start rotating around as we're raising this up because the jaws have closed. But let's go ahead and just start it at the end of that task. We want to use the bottom motor. We're gonna change its value. And in this case, we need to rotate 
210 degrees and we can do this fast or slow you can add in whatever values you want and once that's rotated around this component is actually farther out than the component where we picked it up so we're gonna have to move it out slightly so task 8 is going to start at the end of task 7 and what I want to do is rotate the mid and the upper link out so in this case we're dealing with the mid link which we need to rotate out by 10 degrees I'm gonna do that in one second and task 9 is going to start when task 8 starts so you can see this can take quite a while but if you're creating the control systems to control components like this then you're going to be doing this anyways it's good to figure out this type of information and maybe figure out the ranges of motion that you're actually able to use alright and then the last thing we should have to do is open our jaws so at the end of task 9 we want to start task 10 we want to grab our motor linear motor we want to change its value in this case it's going to be a positive 0.15 and we'll do that in a quarter second and that should drop the component pretty close to where we need it to be now we could also go closer down to the component but let's go ahead and recalculate it and see where this gets us so it rotate, rotates around grabs our component Now remember because of that solid body contact this section takes a little bit longer to calculate but you'll notice for whatever reason that it's calculated everything but the start and end times are no longer working so let's recalculate it one more time and see where the hang-up is everything's rebuilding it rotates around but for whatever reason it's stopping when it gets to that second component just for peace of mind let's go ahead and save the assembly just in case it locks up we don't want to lose any information that we've already created let's play it from the beginning and see how far it's actually been calculated alright so we are gonna to have to recalculate it from the beginning rotates down closes the jaws and again that solid body contact between the components definitely slows down the calculations the motions aren't so bad because it's controlling motors as long as your assembly isn't very heavy in terms of rebuild and moving rotates around fairly quickly so when it stops we're gonna get some rotation of our component lowers it close down and opens the jaws now at this point this is where turning on gravity having some mass properties is going to come in because gravity is going to take over and drop that component down but again we haven't applied any mass properties we haven't applied any gravity to the situation and that's really just to help rebuild times so hopefully you can see that creating this event based motion is definitely more realistic for this type of component when you're dealing with components like these robots that have a lot of motors and actuators construction equipment any hydraulic or hydro pneumatic any of that type of equipment that's actually powered by linear actuators motors maybe external forces or springs or you know any of these types of things you're gonna be controlling them in some sort of way you're gonna have a trigger maybe you've got cherry switches or limit switches that you want to start or stop you can create sensors and all this different types of components and it really helps you get a good feel and a good understanding of how your assemblies and how your parts are actually going to work in reality and really that's the end goal when you create these things you don't want to be building a real life version or even just a prototype to find out that something doesn't work so it's always good to get as much as you can out of the software that's a couple different ways that we've showed you how to create this type of animation in motion it's it's not just to create a rendered animation it's to create the real physical motion between components and this can be as simple or as complex as you guys need and as always if you guys have any questions please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time